Hi guys, today we're going to wrap up the tiger head study that we started the other day. Now, I have to say this was intended to be a two day piece. And oftentimes when we're videotaping, you know, we can lead you to believe anything we want you to believe. We can make you think that it took two days and it actually took three weeks. Just for the sake of transparency, I would do want to explain how this piece evolved and what, a, you know, what occurred to delay it. This actually became almost a four day piece. And you know, the day I started with the first day, we were good. The second day, the day I intended to finish it, uh, we had, Oh goodness. Okay. I had a big smudge. I went right across the whole piece. Uh, I was trying to adjust my easel and uh, I slipped. The piece slipped and a whole section of it just got smudged. And I was like, oh. okay. So there's one little setback. So I thought, okay, I can fix that. Then I had um, um, a TV station wanted to do an interview. And so they came in with, you know, they had their crew and their cameras and stuff. And so that took a little bit extra time that I wasn't intending because that was kind of impromptu. And here we are doing um, TV spots. And then um, a good problem that came was I had a client that came and bought the last piece that I did, the little bobcat piece. Yeah, that little sucker sold. And that was nice. And I had him coming. And of course, then he's actually a collector of mine. And so we had you know, we visited and that's, and this is all wonderful things, but sometimes these types of things can delay a piece, uh, whether it's, you know, were you having to correct paint problems because you slipped or just because you have somebody come to visit. So I just want to go ahead and say that up front that we did have quite a bit of delays, but, um, I did get it done. And today is the day you're going to go ahead and see how the process and completing the piece. And, uh, let's go ahead and complete the tiger piece with all the fun detail. I'll see you on the other side. Here we're putting in some of the detail. Now you can see that I'm using a much smaller brush and I'm making a more hairy stroke, if you will. I'm currently using a Rosemary Eclipse Filbert 1 to do a lot of this detail. It's quickly becoming one of my favorites there. Um, you'll see me flipping the canvas from time to time and I'll do that because it's just easier for my hand to create that hair in that direction. So there's always a lot of uh, flipping around, if you will. But this is me just laying in more and more detail and it will be more and more layers, just like you see here. It's just a different angle. And you can see that this, you know, I, I may just go ahead and emphasize some areas and before I actually start laying the hair in, here we go flipping out again. I do a lot of that. But um, as far as the colors that I'm using, and I'll go over this at the end, what my palette actually contains, but um, you can, uh, a lot of the black stripes are actually, um, they're either ivory black, which is kind of a warmer color. I have a lot of purples that are, believe it or not, are going into these stripes and uh, Van Dyke brown. Now here I am uh, putting in some of the whiskers and another great brush for doing whisker work is a uh, sword brush and this is uh, one of Rosemary Sword's awesome brushes. Um, and then I've actually using one of the riggers as well to put some of the more of the, just the, the whiskers and a little bit more detail. I love their brushes, I just gotta say. Now occasionally I'll have to do an eye over. I did not like the placement of the eye. It was a little bit too high. I don't know, it wasn't right. So here I am painting an eye over again. It happens, I do it all the time.
Okay, I took you off time lapse for a second. Um, I may have mentioned that the other day I had a big smear. <laughs> right in this area was where I had a smear. And so it's very dark and muddy and I had to let it dry out a little bit. So I needed to lighten this area up. Um, you know, there are days when we just, we just have little things happen. And this was one of those days. I need to cool my color down. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, King's Blue to my white here. And just cool it down just a little bit. This doesn't look very cool yet, but trust me, it's getting there. We're getting so close on this piece. Now I'm only just a nitpicky stuff. And I'm trying to layer some color where it will shine a little bit more. Just putting little tiny wisps of hair in there. And uh, lightening up some areas. But we're getting pretty much down to the wire. I like when we're almost done. It's just now, it's just the fun little tiny things that you put in. in here. I'll be worrying a little bit more about this eye. Just this eye is giving me a fit today. Sometimes that happens. I'll work it out. I like to remind people too, paintbrushes. <laughs> They work in all different directions. One of the things I find most interesting about when I'm working with my students is I find so many times people think that paintbrushes only go in this direction. Like from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. You know what? They also go from bottom to top and from side to side. And I think once people figure out that paintbrushes are they're pretty versatile. <laughs> They're pretty versatile little brushes. And so I can see I missed a whole white or light colored section. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of, um, I'm using a little bit of um, cadmium yellow deep with white. Lightening this area up here. Again, I'm, I'm keeping, being very consistent with my hair strokes. I'm being, very aware of which way the hair is going. And uh, so I've got to lighten this up in here. So I have this cadmium yellow deep with uh, white mixed in. It's a good color for a base. You know, one of the things I think is interesting is, is about a tiger is really the spots and stripes on a tiger are not necessarily symmetrical. We want to think that they are, but they're really not. And so, you know, if I have a spot here, it doesn't mean I have to have a spot in exactly the same place it's going to match because they're not really put together that way. Just a little, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm having to use a little bit more oil in my brush simply because it's we're getting down towards the end here and it's it's just about detail and I need it to be thin uh, I'm going to add a little bit more detail and lightness in this area 
And some of the, the way the hair would grow, you might actually lose some of the spots and the stripes just because the hair tufts are gonna kind of cover some of them up. heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a million times, be conscious of the color shifts and temperature shifts within a piece. Um, of course, I do have a reference that I'm following and I'm looking at, um, but I'm using the tiger reference that I have here, not necessarily as a portrait piece. I, I have done tiger's portraits for zoos and that type of thing where you know, the spots and the stripes, they had to be precise. You, I had to have them in exactly the right um, area. It, I, I couldn't fudge on that. I, this, this time, because this is not really a portrait, I am just using the tiger as a, a model, but not necessarily as a subject of a portrait. There's a difference there, folks. difference is, is I'm not trying to make this this tiger look like this specific tiger. I just need it to look like a tiger. And I'm going to put a couple little bit more of these uh, cadmium yellow deep in some of the areas through here. They seem to be really shiny and stand out. I kind of like that. Tell you what guys I, I know that cadmium gets such a bad rap for being a, a, a product or a, a paint color that's not a healthy color you know it does but oh my goodness there's really no substitute for some you know you can get cad um, hues and they're fine, and I usually recommend my students use cad hues, actually. But, uh, I gotta say it, I'm gonna say it, and I'll probably... I just really like cads, I just do. And like I said, I'm getting pretty much down to the wire, and here in a minute, I'm gonna call it done. I like how he looks. I'm gonna make the transition, some of the hair strokes a little bit smoother, especially like in this rough area um, over here. It just looks like it's a little bit too abrupt. So I'm taking a, a blue gray and just, just kind of making it a little less abrupt. I'm just kind of blending that in a little bit, but y'all, I think this cat's done. Feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, we're gonna call it done. Uh, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that sometimes we call something done and then we come back and work on it. I usually recommend that people do not do that. Um, in this case, um, being that this was a demo, I am very happy with it. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Now you can see here. <laughs> There's the palette that I worked from to do the tiger. There's a lot of interesting colors going on and stuff happening here. Um, I had basically uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow light. I had cadmium red light. I had cadmium yellow deep. I had Van Dyke brown. Um, I had a little chromium oxide. I actually put that on late. Over here, I have a sorted amount of grays. I've got a, I think this one was just, this is my gray medium tone. I've got a gray, a blue gray, some more white. Looks like that's a, that's kind of a blob of paint that barely got touched. Um, I had my yellow gray here. I had a warm gray. Up top, I had a lot of my cool colors. Up here, I had a yellow, I'm um, sorry, uh, ultramarine blue. Daxazine purple, King's blue. I had a little bit of Mars black and uh, raw umber. 
and white. Of course, titanium white is also on the palette. And folks, that basically was what I worked from to do this particular piece. And here we have the tiger. Now, I know that sometimes when I'm filming, I'm filming it at such an awkward angle. Uh, I'm hoping to get some new equipment soon so that I can change that for you. But this is the finished tiger. So I am hoping that you enjoyed this video. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Well, there you go. We finished up the tiger piece and I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope you are too. I hope you were able to uh, appreciate a lot of the problems that went through the process of getting it done. But yes, it's finished and there you have it. We finished the tiger piece, got all the detail in. And uh, again, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you will continue to watch the YouTube videos. If you're not a, a subscriber, please subscribe and uh, give me some thumbs up, some love, and go ahead and hit the bell. That way you'll know when the next piece comes out. I'm trying to drop them, every, you know, at least twice a week. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I think uh, I'm enjoying the whole process. Today was kind of a a fun day because I did reach 100 uh, subscribers. I know to a lot of people that's not a big deal, but to me it is. And I just wanna thank all my subscribers for sticking with me and, and checking in and seeing how things go. And uh, until we get to the next video, I'll see ya. Thanks again.